We're about to break down the body language and behavior of P. Diddy and his apology video. Greg, we're going to tell us about the video we're going to watch. Yeah, so Cassie Ventura, who was a long-term girlfriend of Diddy, had filed a lawsuit in November of 23 that was settled the next day. In that, she had accusations of sex trafficking, beating, and other things that we're not going to mention here, That were, but it was settled the very next day. Then this week in May, a video from a 2016 attack in a hotel lobby, in a hotel elevator lobby was uncovered, and the DA says no charges can be placed, but Diddy has to do damage control. That's what we got. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was up. I mean, I had rock bottom. But I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my ashes in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, look all the rehab. Had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. All right, Greg, what do you got? I'm going to keep it really short here. Always ask yourself when you see an apology video, does it include a but? And when it includes a but, there's a problem. His, his comes late, but he goes on down and tells you, but I've been working on myself. Okay, that's good. That has nothing to do with how I perceive you. I'm going to perceive you based on what I see in the video where there's a young woman on the ground. You're kicking her in the rib, kicking her. That's pretty powerful stuff. If you watch this video, go watch it yourself. But the but comes. And then a little bit of wrapping in holy ground, you know, wrapping himself in holy clothing when he says, you know, I'm talking to the almighty good. That still doesn't affect whether the lawsuit's going to come after you or not. But people always are going to make a video for an apology instead of an interview because it's their chance to deliver whatever message they want to deliver without being interrupted. We do them all the time when they're asked questions, and it has to get really tough. If you're going to do a, an apology video, the best time to do it is when you're feeling really, really, really down about something. It doesn't have to be about the act. It can be about the fact the video came up or whatever. Never, ever, ever let a crisis go to waste. It always works well. Mark, I'm sure you've told people before when you're at your lowest is when you want to go apology. Um, and look, everybody makes mistakes, but the more stellar a person is, the more likely they're hiding something back in there. I, I see not a whole lot of body language that I'm going to jump on and leave that for you guys. I'm just going to say that when I hear a butt, even no matter how long rambling it is, and then I wrap myself in holy clothing, that doesn't feel like an apology. That feels like I'm sorry this happened. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so what body language do I see? Well, I don't see much in the forehead there, so we can't see a great deal of uh, potentially concern, um, grief in there, sorrow in there. Why? It's probably a lot, of, a lot of Botox going on there. So not a lot happening in the forehead where we'd usually like to look for if he's sincere uh, around, around this. Um, I think we see his eyes go to potentially a script or some notes down below his phone or on the on the table in front of him. So that's that's of interest. But what's really being said here, it's difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. So he already puts up a barrier. This is difficult to reflect. Darkest times in your life. Well, I'm not apologizing. So it's nothing to do with my life. Uh, you know, technically it would be one's life if he's talking about him. But I think he wants to deflect and distance himself from this. Um, you've got to do that, uh, he says. Again, that's distancing. It's I have to do this. Yeah. But he, he doesn't want this to be focused on him right now and his relationship to this uh act that we've we've seen in this hotel lift lobby, which is extreme. If you haven't seen it, that's your business to go over and see that. But it is extreme what happens there. Now we do get an eye. I hit rock bottom. So he's now there in the story because he wants to tell us he's got to as low as he could possibly get there, this direct relationship to this pit of hell that he was in. And he does take full responsibility for the action. But then he goes on to say therapy, rehab and, and God 
grace and mercy. Well, therapy, rehab, that kind of suggests a sense of illness. So it's like, I take full responsibility, but I might have been ill in some way or on drugs or alcohol. So I want to distance myself from that. And then I, I agree, Greg, he brings in this kind of sacred space there, wraps himself in um, in divine intervention. He's asked God for help on this. He's, he goes into what I would call vision at the same time. His eyes go up to where the heavens would be slightly to give us that idea of a lyrical kind of uh, vision of some kind of deity. <laughs> And then at the end, he does say, I'm truly sorry. But for what? Sorry to who? And for what? There's no mention of a victim. There's no mention of the actual crimes. I understand there might be some lawyers who are saying, hey, don't re-mention who this is about and, and what the crime is, because that could escalate things. But ultimately, if you can't mention the victim and you can't mention what you're sorry for, probably better not to do it in the first place. I don't know who he's doing this for because it, it can't help the victim here because the victim's not mentioned and the crimes aren't mentioned. And it doesn't help me understand that he's sorry towards the victim because he's not mentioning any victim or crimes. Uh, there is quite a bit of disgust that we see throughout. I don't know whether that's disgust for his acts or disgust for him having to show up and do this. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, so let's talk about him using those words, Mark, that you talked about. This is this is also a way that someone can socialize an issue. So it makes you reflect about yourself going through something similar by using those words you in the very beginning of the video. Uh in in like the more deep level influence training and stuff like that. This is called a shift of referential index. So he's also shaking his head no to deny everything in the video. When he's denying everything, he's, he's shaking his head no. Then he's using the exact same no head shake to say he takes responsibility, he's disgusted, and that he's becoming a better man every day. Same exact behavior as when he's making a denial. That's strange. When you just see somebody shake their head no and say, I I, I am sure of it, and they that doesn't mean anything unless you have a baseline, unless you have some behavior to compare it to. And I think it's fascinating how these come out after the video gets leaked. There's the story of redemption hidden inside of all this as well, as if he's been through all this therapy and self-work. So all the things that he did in the video were almost like someone else, almost completely re removed from being him at all. It's like somebody else is responsible for this. And uh, all I can say is, I hope the allegations aren't true about the other stuff, but if they are, if there's any chance they are, I hope he publicly reveals all the videos and the names <laughs> as soon as possible. These people involved in uh, what was alleged anyway should be dragged into the light for everybody to see before any uh, Epstein stuff happens. Scott, what do you got? All right, I totally agree with you on that. My question is, who is he apologizing to? Who's this guy talking to? I mean, he just starts saying, I'm sorry about... So what if you... Who are you sorry to? Who, he doesn't say who he's apologizing to. He only mentions uh, her name, I think, when it's when he talks about going to therapy and all that stuff, because I think she's doing it too, which would make sense. I mean, for her having to go too. But so I, right out of the gate, I'm going, who's this guy apologizing to? It doesn't make any sense. And we're, when we're presented with something like this, it's just as important to to point out and look for the things that are that you're that are supposed to be there, but the things that aren't there that are supposed to be there. That's when you know something's up, and there's so much missing from this. His voice tone is too controlled. That's not that's not real emotion we're seeing or hearing. His his voice is just in this really weird range, and it just stays there. You don't hear that that low guttural thing happening. His head doesn't go doesn't go down. You know, he isn't having those big cathartic breaths where he breathes in real deep and, and lets go. None of that. Nothing. No pain. No, no nothing. It's a pitiful attempt to show himself being sad. But we don't see any sadness. We see no cues of sadness. We don't see any furrowing in the brow. We don't see the chin boss move at all. Nothing. It's just him talking. He gives it a shot a couple of times. He, he tries a couple of times, but that doesn't work either. You know, and when he talks about being disgusted, he doesn't show disgust there. 
where you'd say, I'm disgusted. Your, your mouth would go up right here like, like this and, and maybe a little wrinkle in your, in your nose. Don't say any of that. And this is what matching and mirroring looks like when you're the one that's, that's matching and mirroring somebody. And somebody, and let's say we, we filmed you matching and mirroring someone. This is what it looks like. It looks like that's what he's doing. He's just, he's trying to act, I think, at this point. And it's not working for him. And it doesn't look good. And I think this whole thing was a mistake for him. Um, and when he says, I hit rock bottom, we, we don't see the confirmation nods where we should. They're not happening on the words. When we talk about illustrators, how you illustrate specific words and phrases. And the, his head nods aren't on those specific words. So he's he's not, from a neurological perspective, he's not synced up with what he's saying. His brain, his emotions aren't in in line or hooked up with what he's saying. So that that's another thing that, that looks fake about the singer, makes it look bad for him. And to me, it feels like this is maybe the fifth, sixth shot at, at, at doing this, if not more, of him sitting down trying to look sad, trying to sound sad and all that, because it seems it's not rushed, but there are just these sections of it. You just say, Mark, from an acting what do you see from an acting standpoint, an actor standpoint? Am I, is that what I'm saying making well, sense? I mean, if you wanted to be a better actor, it could be so much better because it could have so much more emotion in it. But but any decent actor is conjuring it up from their past in some way or something, mm -hmm. you know, it's some kind of emotional recall. So, yeah, from an acting point of view... He's not. He's not good. It's not a great. Not a great performance at all. We well, got to have yeah. that emotion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he can recall. I wouldn't think he'd be able to recall that emotion because I don't think he feels that emotion other than for himself sometimes. You know. So I think any of this fake sadness we're seeing, maybe he's maybe he's conjuring that up himself from thinking. You know, when his puppy died, or who knows? It just looks. It, it looks and. Every woman that watches this is going to say, "What's I know what's wrong. This is fake, and that's why, B because it's. I don't believe it's real. I don't think it's real. I think this was a, a mistake. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was up. I mean, I had rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my ashes in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, look all the rehab. Had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. All right. Well, we've taken a look at the video and we've all pretty much made decisions about what we think, what's happened. Mark, what do you think's happened? Yeah, I would say... Botox aside, because we're not seeing a lot of uh, anything in the forehead, but even taking that into account, I don't think we see enough of any type of emotion that we'd want to associate with this to say that it's sincere. So I would say it is most likely an insincere apology going on. And then we have with that that it's, there's no reference to a victim, no reference to any kind of crime or even just misdemeanor or just, you know, doing stuff, direct talk about what was wrong. So there's too much distancing there. Um, I think, uh, Chase, to, to your point, I absolutely agree. It's the defense of it really wasn't me. That person back then is nothing to do with me right now. And therefore, it's a different person. Terrible uh, defense. Um, it doesn't, doesn't make him look any better. But I don't think after seeing that video of the act that anything, anything could make him look good. Uh, he would have been better, I think, to have done absolutely nothing. He'd still look look as bad as he does now, but at least he wouldn't have had to get out of bed that day. Chase. 
When, when you watch this video, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go through it and try to match his face, match his breathing, match his posture, and match the tone of his voice while you talk. And if you feel remorseful, something is probably wrong. If you feel sad, something's probably wrong because you're not doing it right. The emotions are not here. And if you're matching that, if you're, if you're, even if you're doing a parody of this, uh, you should feel next to no sadness or emotion. Scott? Yeah, I think um, this, this, uh, why don't you go to Greg? <laughs> I wasn't ready, dude, because we always go. Well, we uh, always do, yeah. Well, I, I got to go up to Greg. And I was like, well, I was, I'm thinking my eye itches. And I, I want to do it. When, <laughs> sorry, dude. Okay, go ahead and throw it to Greg. And Greg? So when you give an apology, it's about feeling contrite for something you've done wrong, clearly wrong, and you understand it's wrong. What we see here is not, if there's any emotion here, it's sadness to me. And it's not sadness for that having happened. It's sadness about what is happening, that this video just came out. That's why I was saying, Mark, Never waste a good crisis. This is a good opportunity to at least have some kind of emotions to being arrogant, cocky, and saying, we don't talk about that. Remember, you did that on TV before or on a podcast if we don't talk about that. Did the Bill Cosby move? So it, maybe that's the reason they did bring him out. However, I agree with you all. There's no apology about what he did, just that something happened. There's a whole lot of cover. There's a whole lot of, hey, I'm, I'm sorry I did this thing. And the, the other thing, an excuse is, is not part of an apology. The apology is a chance to come in and say, Chase, I'm sorry I broke your car. Not, But the reason I broke it is because. That's what we hear, have here. And then aggrandize self again. I don't see that this guy's contrite for what he's done. I think it's an opportunity to come out while he's at his lowest point, or he thinks he's at his lowest point. He said, I hit rock bottom. I got a feeling that might still come. We might see some more of this stuff come up. And I read that he was actually concerned there might be other footage somewhere was why. That's what I read this morning. Now, whether we know that or not, I'm not sure. But don't believe the apology. Don't think he feels bad. Scott, what do you got? We've seen so many of these apologies. In fact, we've, we've seen so many. We did a whole video, and I'll tag it at the end of this thing, where it was just these YouTube people apologizing to the internet. It is the most hilarious thing you've ever seen in your sure. life, so go watch it if you haven't seen that one. But what he didn't do, what Diddy didn't do, what did he didn't do? <laughs> yeah, don't go down that road. It, yeah, <laughs> You'll never easy. get out. <laughs> so he didn't go watch any uh, anyone else's uh, apology and see how you do it. This is the shortest one I've ever seen. It's less than two minutes, I think. How long is it? Is it a minute and something? One minute, 40, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Jeez, yeah, that's short. Usually they drone on and on. They get to crying and all that, you know. <laughs> so it's hilarious. None of that a dog here. in the picture. <laughs> yeah, none of that here. It's all, it's all him... Uh, doing what he thinks, and it's set up. It's there's a structure to it. There's a structure to it. It's got a beginning. It's got a little action in there. It peaks where he talks about he did had to go to therapy and those kind of things. And then there's the outro at the very end. It's almost like a song, like a like a song. It's almost like song structure, which I'm sure that's the way he sees things like that. But even when you look at the at when the uh, I was doing the sound on this one, trying to clean it up, and you can see how these things are in groups. There's three groups of. Um, of him speaking there. So I think there's three boxes he's laid out to, uh, I mean, and you can see that because it comes a WAV file. You can see what the sound looks like when it's broken down. So and it comes in these three groups. So I'm sure like Mark was talking about when he's looking down at something, he's reading or he's looking at, at his structure, reading each, each point to read or right? so I'll know where he is. So that's, that's, uh, I thought that was interesting. But th then again, it makes me feel more confident in my, a feeling that this is fake and he really doesn't mean it because like all you guys said, he, who was he apologizing to? Didn't mention her except for said they, she went to therapy and he did too. And that was it. So uh, it just uh, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good from any angle in here. All right, fellas. Thanks for another good one and we'll see you next time. <laughs>